is it better to have weight forward or low on an RC crawler? If your goal is to maximize vertical climbing capability, the answer is pretty simple. Let's check it out. On this channel, we look at the science behind our grown-up toys. Whenever you change the position of weight or add weight, you are shifting your CG or center of gravity. You might be trying to decide where to mount your receiver or battery, or you might be contemplating adding brass or tungsten weights. One thing to know about the center of gravity is that it doesn't change when the angle of your vehicle changes. If you're driving uphill, downhill, upside down, the very definition of center of gravity is the simplified imaginary balance point of all mass in all directions on your vehicle. The only way to change this is to physically move mass around on the vehicle itself. The center of gravity of your vehicle has both a vertical and a horizontal and actually side to side location, which you can't really see in the 2D image. Just to keep things simple, let's assume a 50-50 weight bias. The CG is right in the middle of your vehicle. If it's 60-40 or 70-30, that won't change the principle we're discussing here. Let's also assume that your shocks are set at a fixed ride height. The height of your CG obviously changes if your shocks are extended or compressed and your ride height changes. For this exercise, we're going to assume the ride height is fixed. A real life example of that would be if you've got negative springs holding your chassis down with your shocks compressed at full droop. If you run a sprung setup, your CG will shift on an incline, but the underlying principle here will still hold, so not to worry. Let's look at a 45 degree incline. The weight balance of your vehicle, meaning the amount of weight pushing down on the contact patch of the tires, changes from front to rear. It now starts to approach something like 75-25 weight balance. These are just sample numbers and not meant to be taken exactly. Your center of gravity within the vehicle has not changed. That would be impossible. But the orientation of the vehicle relative to the ground has changed. And that puts more weight on the rear wheels because the CG is now closer to the rear contact patch. 75% of the vehicle weight is pushing down on the rear tire contact patch and only 25% is pushing down on the front. Now let's see what happens at a steeper incline. At some point, your CG is going to be directly over the rear contact patch. I'm just picking 65 degrees as an example, but it's a pretty accurate number in my experience. You should be able to tune the weight of your crawler to climb 65 degrees with full wheel traction. I've seen people climb steeper on traction boards with their wheels spinning, but I don't know how valid drifting up a slope is, meaning all wheels spinning. You just can't recreate that exact level of non-traction on a rock or on a trail. So personally, I always assume full connected traction. When you get to that precipice of balance, you've got 100% weight on the rear wheels and are on the verge of tipping over one way or the other. If you go just one degree past that balance point, your rig will flip over and fall off the hill. Ever try to balance a broom on your hand? It's kind of the same thing with your car. It's balancing on the rear contact patch. Note that the rear contact patch is actually forward of the rear axle when you're on an incline. If you're interested, I also have a video on why this situation defeats front overdrive if you want to check that one out. So you want as much weight as possible on this side of your balance point and to be able to climb steeper inclines. Let's look at the car at 45 degrees and move weight 20 millimeters forward on the vehicle. Just to be clear, we're moving this weight horizontally on the truck and not horizontally in space. If the weight moves 20 millimeters horizontally on the vehicle, it only moves 14 millimeters horizontally in space using some simple trigonometry. This 14 millimeters is what affects the vehicle's balance point when you are sitting at 45 degrees. When you move your weight forward by 20 millimeters, you get 14 millimeters of weight holding the vehicle down. 
Now let's compare with moving the weight down. Since it's 45 degrees, use the same triangle cosine or sine formula. At 45 degrees, they are the same answer. And you get the same 14 millimeter effective weight shift in the horizontal direction. So whether you move the weight forward or down, you get the same 14 millimeter benefit at 45 degrees. Also remember that in addition to this balance point, you will also have the torque from the rear wheel wanting to tip you over. The only way to minimize this effect is to be very smooth and slow with the throttle. Despite many threads and discussions to the contrary, you cannot magically push the front end down with the link riser or any other link geometry. Anti-squat is a dynamic response to chassis weight shift under high acceleration and crawlers creeping up a slope do not fall into that realm. I've made multiple videos on that topic. Now let's tip the car to 65 degrees and shift some weight forward 20 millimeters. Apply the same math as before with 65 degrees and you only get 8 millimeters of forward weight shift. That's just over half what it was at 45 degrees. Now let's figure out 20 millimeters down at 65 degrees. This time we use the sine function because we're looking at a different side of the triangle. In this case, the horizontal shift is now 18 millimeters. So both directions move the weight in the right direction, but moving weight down is more effective if you're steeper than 45 degrees. So what did we learn? Both forward and lower help shift the CG in a beneficial direction for climbing, but lower weight helps more when it's steeper than 45 degrees. Always build your vehicle with weight lower when you can. It's best to use existing components that have to be there, battery, ESC, receiver, to adjust your CG before adding extra weight. Mount all your components as low as possible, then forward in that order. Only add weight as a second step to reach your front to rear weight bias goal. 60 to 65 percent forward weight bias seems to be the sweet spot, though I've seen people run 70 percent on the front. If you can get that weight bias without adding additional weight, that's ideal. Keep your car as light as possible. Shift components to their best possible location, then add weight low on the front knuckle for that final fore-aft bias.